talk about joint features and I'm going to immediately bring in I guess what is a really quintessential image I'm not going to sort of say this is either an elbow or a knee let's just let's just call this a synovial joint okay so let's just assume this is some old synovial joint we won't be specific and mention which one I'll try and be uh, highly detailed on which one it is but I do want to draw your attention to a couple of features here the first feature I want to draw your attention to is of course if we've got this lower bone and this upper bone I want to draw your attention oh, let me change color from the one I just chose let's try an orange I want to draw attention to this little surface up here and if I kind of draw around it there this kind of structure here I could even shade it in or the one that's just above here we've got this structure here that comes all the way around at the end of this bone with this this structure here this is the cartilage okay cartilage cartilage I suppose we might want to sort of pronounce it just for spelling clarification and the key thing I sort of want to stress to you about this cartilage here guys is it protects bones now that will not be a surprise to you based on where I've just kind of illustrated it. It's on the ends of bones, of course, by definition, is a protective structure. I also want to stress here, it prevents friction. Now, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever kind of uh, held a human or an animal bone, for example, but it's kind of fibrous and rigid and hard and stuff. If these things were to clash and to hit against each other, it would be really, really painful. That's actually what people experience with things like arthritis, whether it be osteo or rheumatoid arthritis. The cartilage prevents that from happening and it prevents friction. It also prevents wear and tear. That's why I mentioned the conditions I just mentioned a moment ago, sort of arthritis type conditions. They are the wear and tear of this cartilage and it's why it's such a painful thing they're also excellent think about you know, like the knee joint when you land or the ankle joint the hip joint they're also really good shock absorbers they absorb impact on any kind of collision or landing of course in the lower body it could be a landing for example and they provide support okay so the cartilage provides support to the actual joint itself okay so it's a nice point for us to make there therefore they also give stability okay so we like the idea of stability through the joint because of cartilage and it's also to do with mobility or aiding mobility. So this cartilage, you know, and again, think about the opposite case. If someone's got uh, arthritis, they struggle with mobility, right? And um, they can also connect bones. And we've this isn't an example, but we've got certain bones which are cartilaginous. If you think about the cartilage of the, um, for example, in, in the vertebral column, the cartilage would actually be the disc between the vertebrae, okay, that, that actually connects bones or cartilaginous joints. And you can all, you might also want to think they keep airways open. Now, this is actually a different types of type of cartilage. In your trachea, if you're not sure what that is, we'll learn about that in due course. Your trachea actually is made up of rings of cartilage. This is your windpipe where you breathe, the air goes down in and out of your lungs okay that that well it leads to the bronchi that get in and out of the lungs but that trachea is made of cartilage so it's useful to, to mention that now I'm going to take a, a sort of a step back here and I want to now look at this structure around here this one which I'm very badly sort of drawing on here this structure surrounds the joint and kind of passes over the joint and this is a ligament and all synovial joints have ligaments, okay? So we're talking about ligaments now. Now, the first thing we want to stress about ligaments is they connect bone to bone. So think that through a second. Ligaments do not connect muscle to bone. We'll come to that in a second. They connect bone to bone. So they are not transmitting force and they are not making the bone sort of move. So what's their job there for? And their job, we've already written this word once, is to stabilize, okay? So they are stabilizers, not the sort you get on your bike, of course. The other thing is that they prevent unwanted movement. And if we therefore prevent unwanted movement, we are preventing dislocation. This ligament here is preventing this bone kind of going off in this direction or this direction or this one in this direction. They are strengthening that joint and making sure that dislocation is at least less likely, hopefully never. I've said already, they sort of restrict, I'll, I'll put it this way, it's, this, it's linked to the point above, they restrict unwanted movement. Now, ligaments are not perfect, they can't you know, resist a really hard tackle on the side of the knee in American football, for example, but they are uh, a protective structure. And of course, if ligaments become damaged because the knee becomes destabilized, even dis uh, so, so the joint becomes destabilized, even dislocated. The thing about um, ligaments is they absorb shock as well. So there's overlap here with our cartilage. You know, we've got hard surfaces, haven't we, in a, in a joint. They are elastic, or they are at least when you're young. I'm 45 these days and mine ain't that elastic anymore. They also maintain posture. Okay, so ligaments are really important from a postural perspective. Now you've touched on that in your, <coughs> excuse me, in your um, 
function of the skeleton. And that also, OCR would like me to tell you, responsible for proprioception. Now, proprioception is the feeling of, for example, a sense of balance or being in balance, the correct feeling of a movement. And OCR would like me to tell you that um, ligaments uh, aid proprioception. Now, you can sort of tell from my wording of that is that I'm not entirely in agreement, but as it's going to get you a mark in your exam, I will tell you that. Now, finally, I am going to talk to you about tendons, and we've got to look at the muscular system for tendons. Why? Because if we take this gastrocnemius muscle here, look, it's connecting down onto this tendon. You probably know it's the Achilles. I'll do it and pick this. This Achilles tendon and this Achilles tendon inserts down here on the heel. It's got a name, calcaneus, but that's up for another day. And when it pulls, when this muscle pulls, pulls, of course, it pulls this tendon up. And effectively, what happens is these toes become pointed. So what is the role of the tendons? The role of the tendons is to connect muscle to bone, unlike the ligaments, of course, muscle to bone. And crucially, they make bones move. Okay, they make bones move. So the muscle generates the force. The force is transmitted through the tendon onto the skeleton, and the skeleton moves, okay? Tendons also give stability. You know, think about a muscle connecting directly to a bone. It's kind of a, a fleshy, soft tissue connecting to a really, really hard tissue, isn't it? So this is that kind of interim. It helps to be lots of stability there. They're also supportive structures. And finally, they act as shock absorbers, especially when a muscle lengthens under tension, much more of which in other lessons or other courses. So we've clearly detailed our cartilage, our ligaments, and our tendons. Now, to finish this off, guys, I know it's a lot of information, but I've summarized it all in here for you. And it's only the stuff that I've written down, and you probably think, well, James, you could have just given us a table and we'd have got on with it. But the point is I wanted to explain those concepts to you. Look at look in further at the notion of the cartilage, the ligament, the tendon. Look, for example, at the differences in blood supply. Look, for example, at different uh, differences in the connective ends, where they exist, the roles they play, and these will be the leading pathways into your better understanding of human movement profiles. Thank you.